our program, Hollywood Structured. If some of you already know, our program is designed to help the young people who wish to enter the entertainment field. May it be nightclub work, theater, film, or television. Today, as our special guest, we have someone who started out as a child wanting to be an actress. However, had no real role model to follow, so decided that she better find another job that will sustain her. And she became a teacher. Now she has gone full turn. She is a full-fledged actress and with loads of credits to her name. And the most important one to me that comes to my mind is her role of uh, Shug Avery, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, yes. uh, in Color Purple, in which she co-starred with Danny Glover and Whoopi Goldberg. Her name is Margaret Avery. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Lillian. Before Margaret shares her experience with us, I would like to talk to you today about taking risks. Now, you're probably wondering, what is taking risk? What does it have to do with our profession? Well, our profession is loaded with risk, besides. But you may not realize that almost every action, physical action that we do every day, is taking risks. Uh, let's take walking, which seems easy enough. You risk to fall. Let's take cooking, which seems easy enough, at least for me. For some of you, you may not cook, but it's easy enough. You risk to burn yourself. You cross a street, you risk to be hit by a car. You drive a car, you risk to hit something or someone. But we don't think about those actions as risk-taking because we've been doing it for so long, we are prepared for it, and it's become routine. Now, how does that apply to us in our profession, taking risks? You go and apply for a job, or you want to apply for a job, that's taking a risk, the risk of not being approved. However, if you don't apply for that job, you never know if you could have done it. You want to become a singer, you be want to become an actor. And I use the word actor for both male and female. You want to try. Well, you take the risk. What is the other side? You risk failure. However, if you don't try, you will never know if you could have done it or if you would get the job or the role. In the meantime, prepare. Take risks. Maybe along the way you may find out that you don't like it. You know the famous expression, try if you like it. Maybe you'll try it and you won't like it. But at least you will be satisfied of having taken that risk. Well, our guest today, Margaret, took several big risks. And I would like her to explain to us where she comes from, where she was born, Margaret, my first question is, you were born in Oklahoma, right? Right, a little town called Mangum. You don't blink going through. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand that you are part uh, Cherokee? A little, yeah. My, my grandfather and, and, and also great-grandmother. So uh, that, I guess, explains for the high cheekbones that I'm blessed with. Um, migrated to San Diego. Na Navy town. So I really grew up in California because at the age of two I came to San Diego. Your father was in the Navy? Right. Supply? I see. So you grew up in San Diego. And when you were very young, I mean how old, you decided that you wanted to be an actress? I guess it really started even before I was aware of it because being an only child, both parents worked. Uh, I was really well behaved. I mean, if they told me to do something, I did it. And uh, uh, in the 50s, I, th I think kids, maybe you, you, you took your, your parents' word as law. I mean, you were going to get in trouble if you, even if they weren't around looking, you knew there was some way they would know if you didn't do, do something. So um, I was told you had to stay, and as soon as you come home from school, you do your homework and you stay inside the house and maybe it was like three hours that I had to do this but in the fall that's uh, a long time 
because it gets dark early. So I used to keep myself company and just do characters and answer myself. And, and uh, when it started getting dark, I'd get a little scared and I'd just start talking louder. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it really kind of started then, uh, unbeknown to myself. Were you watching TV at the time? Uh, there wasn't really much television. Uh, I think Hi Howdy Doody. And <laughs> uh, um, of course, I wasn't allowed to watch television, which now, today, I think isn't such a bad idea sometimes. Um, but when I did watch television, it was Lucille Ball, uh, Colgate Comedy Hour. There were no uh, black entertainers on Colgate mm -hmm. Comedy Hour. It was just Milton Berle. And, uh, Red Skelton. Uh, I didn't even know that black entertainers existed until stumbling upon black magazines such as Jet, Ebony uh, magazine, mm -hmm. uh, which now they are just nationwide sold, mm -hmm. I mean worldwide, but at that time only in the black communities, I believe. So I really never saw black images other than the, the movies in the 30s and uh, the maids were real fat mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I was always skinny as a reel, so I said, well, th that's, I can see I'm never going to be an actress, you know. Because <laughs> I'm never going to be able to play a maid. Absolutely. Yeah. So, because that was the only image they had. You, you, uh, I, maids were always overweight, and my mother at that time was trying to make me gain weight. She thought that I was abnormal because she went to the doctor and they said, give her a hat a call, you know, and it was some awful tasting stuff. It, it was so bad, they banned it from the market. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank God. Um, but you were not trying to get fat in order to play the part of me. No, no. I mean, I was just, just always thin. very thin. thin. My father was, was tall, thin, and you know how kids are. I mean, even now, uh, someone was laughing at me the other day in the spa. They caught me sitting there doing weights with my wrist because I'm always, a f I'm always, you see, I've got long sleeve uh, something on now because I'm, I'm self-conscious of how small my, my arms are. In color purple, I'd gained 30 pounds, so I was quite really? bigger, but not so much in diet, but in working out with a trainer, so I was quite big then. Did you keep it? Did you lose it? Uh, I lost most of it. I'd say all but 10 pounds. Yeah. All right. So now you are in San Diego. Mm -hmm. You are in school there. Do you do plays? Do you do... Uh... Okay. Uh, I must say that I grew up in a naval housing project for low-income families. And so when I went away to high schools, uh, Point Loma High, which at, in those days, you, you're talking about 25 years ago, it was very... Um, was it still segregated at the time? Very much so. I mean, Unspoken, Point, but probably... Point Loma, Point Loma was, at that time, uh, very ritzy and mm -hmm. only whites, upper-class whites, mm -hmm. lived there. And the only, the only uh, blacks that the children or people came in contact with were their domestics. So when I went to Point Loma High uh, uh, and participated in the high school plays, the only parts I got were the, were the, the maids. And I don't mean great parts. I mean, they were one-liners, first act, you know, scene one. I'll get it, Miss Jones. And that was the end of Margaret for until the second <laughs> act. <laughs> and um, the other thing was that I did part get to participate in the citywide speech contest and coming back to the school with first place in oral interp, first place in dramatic interp but never got cast, you know. So I said, this is, forget this, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's obvious, thinking of being an actress is just not possible. Until I saw Island in the Sun with uh, Dorothy Dandridge and, and ooh, that good looking man, Harry <laughs> Belafonte. <laughs> and these beautiful, uh, copper skin images and she wasn't fat Dorothy Dandridge you know so I said well maybe it was kind of planted the seed and I didn't really start thinking about it until um, uh, Sidney Poitier got an Oscar for Lilies of the Field by that time I was in college and mm -hmm. had started preparing myself for a profession uh, of teaching and for those of you out there who are thinking about getting in the business 
I will advocate study, study, study hard, but also have something that you can support yourself with until that discovery break happens. For me, it was 20 years <laughs> that I was discovered for Color Purple and had to work my tush off. Well, I didn't work it off. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> but still had to earn the, the role. So um, I'm glad I did teach. My mother encouraged me to do that. And I think I only did it because of her. And I, I forever am grateful to her now because uh, after I decided to leave the teaching profession, it was the teaching that supported me, supported me the acting classes, dancing, and uh, anything else I wanted to do. And thank goodness for it because waitresses and waiters don't make that kind of money all the time. <laughs> So um, it supported me and enabled me to study and to, to prepare myself. Then when the breaks came, I was ready. Uh, Margaret, I want to talk, so I won't forget, about uh, many, the many awards that you have received. And I asked you this morning to bring a few to the studio. And I'm going to ask uh, Paul to uh, show the first one. And would you explain what they are? Okay. I forgot to um, explain, however, in the very beginning, that her role in Color Purple got her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, Lillian, when you asked me to bring awards, I mean, it's it's almost as though uh, I had mixed feelings about it because it's almost as though you, you say, "Well, you're patting yourself on the back for something," but but it's. It works in another way, too. It, it reminds you, and I say, because in this profession of rejection, you forget the accomplishments that you have made, and you're always, myself, I'm always beating myself up for what I'm not doing, and, and I should be doing this, and, and you forget about your accomplishments and how much you do mean to other people. So when you said, bring out your awards, it, it got me thinking, well, well, maybe I'm not so. <laughs> I, I'm an okay person. Uh, I, this one, I'm particularly proud of. Uh, is this the? Uh, uh, this was the Paul Robeson Award uh -huh. given to me by the Pan African Cultural uh, Organization at Northridge College for um, excellent performing artists. And I'm you can pat yourself. It's all Thank right. you. Okay. <laughs> the name Paul Robeson behind it is yes. just very special. Okay. What is the, the next one that you have there? Um, uh, this is the volunteer, uh, is it volunteer patrol officers uh, in, of Orange County, county, that's in California, uh, awarded me this for encouraging youth uh, for a strong, positive role model, and I think that was very important, and mm -hmm. I, that's special to me. Uh, the one on the table here. Oh yes, can we can we get the camera on this uh, on this one, uh, which is a mm -hmm. beautiful statue? I'll try to move it. Uh, there's an organ. I'm embarrassed that I don't know the name of the organization. I was trying to find the name to this morning, uh, but there's an organization that's located in uh, Washington D.C. On the eve of the Academy Awards, they have a special dinner for the black nominees. And this was awarded to me, the, the eve of the Academy Awards. And you can see that it's, it's um, Magnificent. carved here. It's the family. The father is uh, heading mm -hmm. it. And it's, it just it, it symbolizes love, unity, and self-worth. And Hollywood is so hard. I mean, it's hard for everybody. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Hollywood is difficult business. But for the ethnic performing artists, it's ten times as hard. So this organization says, hey, we appreciate you, and whether you're honored or not, we want you to know that That's it's an amazing. accomplishment. And that. But the, I'll tell you, the one that I'm really... Uh, I don't have it here t today, I think, it, because it didn't reflect well mm -hmm. on camera. 
but I'm particularly proud of being spokesperson for the California Commission of Women against drug and alcohol abuse and uh, ethnic women pr are on the uprise for alcoholism and drug use, it's pr particularly professional women. They're choosing alcohol as a release of stress in the evenings and um, I know about that, I relate to that very much. So uh, you'll probably be seeing me talking against You go all around California and speak to I group? will be. And I think there's a, a 30 second commercial airing now. I see. Oh, that's very nice. I have alcoholism so, in my family. I see. Uh, I came very close to, I mean, I don't, they say you're either an alcoholic or you're not, or you have mm -hmm. the tendencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and alcoholism just runs rampant in my family. And during the low time of my career, when I couldn't buy a job, and you go through this low self-esteem, and why me, and nobody wants me, I'll get out of the profession, or whatever. And with the plague of uh, just being tormented, of possibly le losing my home, um, at, the, at that time, my expenses were much higher than a teacher's salary would would uh, uh, allow me to earn, um, I started drinking. And I'm really not a drinker, per se, uh, but I was discovering that a big jug of wine that I would normally have for three months, I was going through in one, one week, you know, just to get to sleep at night, so. Um, congratulations for doing all that work for the youth. I would like to uh, touch on the subject that you started taking singing lesson and you got a break in Vegas. Mm -hmm. However, you made a bad mistake. You came over there, you went over there unprepared, no clothes, no nothing. And what <laughs> did you do? Explain to the young people what you did that they shouldn't do. <laughs> well, be prepared, I just said earlier. Uh, after I made the decision to, to to uh, leave teaching, I moved to Los Angeles. I had to make the choice, either stage acting in New York or film acting Los Angeles. So I moved there and was there a week and a girlfriend called me and said, Margaret, singers are needed in Vegas. Well, before she could finish the sentence, I was packed, you know. <laughs> well, I get there, no costumes, no charts, uh, not even makeup, and uh, Having taught, I had a credit card. I mean, you can, I, you can't get a credit card saying you're an actress, earning fifty thousand a year. But you can get a credit card. <laughs> at that time, if you say you're a teacher making fifty bucks a week, <laughs> because it's, that's that's how how little the uh, entertainment business is respected, you know. But um, I charged everything, and Vegas is not the place to get costumes. I mean, you're going to pay ten times the price for a dress and for charts. Uh, and so for a six-week job, I wound up having to remain six months to work as a substitute teacher to get myself out of debt. <laughs> I said, I can't go back to Los Angeles in debt like this. So um, okay, now that was my singing debut. You started to work in television. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, a commercial is what helped you get you mm -hmm. your card, right? Absolutely. My my union card? Yes. No, I'll tell you what happened to get my union card, and it'll never happen again because the rules have changed. But I was selected to be on the dating game. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I forgot <laughs> about that. Yes, yes, and yes. they told me. You'll get paid more if you're in Screen Actors Guild than if you're not in the union. So I thought, well, okay, maybe I'll just join the union and then I'll make a little extra, but I'll, at least I'll get in the union, and that's how I got in. You cannot do that now. but No, the rule now, by the way, for the young people out there, is you, have, you can work one time in a union project, uh, Taft-Hartley Law, it's called, but then you have to join the, the union, which I think costs about $1,000. Oh, now. is it that Something, much now? Yeah, oh, it's I terrible. So. Okay, Margaret, we are rapping and chatting and everything, and the time is flying. Um, you started to work in television. 
And then you started yes. to work in black features. Okay, Am I, I correct? I, I started out doing television commercials because yes. suddenly, now you're talking about uh, early 70s. Mm -hmm. there, there just weren't people in television then. I mean, there, Madison Avenue or Wall Street, whoever makes these decisions, finally, like around 70, I would say 69 or 70, decided that black people use deodorant and, and toothpaste and all that and started making commercials using mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. us. And because I had already been studying, uh, I was getting like almost every commercial that I was interviewed for. Maybe I only went out for three a month, but as opposed to the white actresses going out three a day, but I would get all three. So, um, How did you get color purple? Color purple, I'd like to talk about believing in yourself. You have to believe that you can do something, and you've got to... Be careful of the microphone. Yeah, sorry, can't get too <laughs> <laughs> physical here. Uh, color purple reflected that. I w it came at a time that I, as I said earlier, couldn't buy a job. I had worked at getting, uh, started going back to singing, and came back to Los Angeles only to do my taxes and heard about this role from about four or five other actresses. And when I could talk to my agent about it, they said, sorry, we've tried our best to get you in. You, they don't want to see you. They don't feel you're right. I really had to just persist. Uh, got Reuben Cannon, the casting director, wrote him a note asking him, please, you got to see me. He saw me. He agreed, yes, you're okay, but I, you're not right for the role. You did a great reading, but you're not right for the role. Uh, and then he did let me uh, finally test. Uh, and three days later, my agent called and said, Steven Spielberg wants to see you. And basically a, a month of auditioning after that. I got the part. But had I ex had accepted no for an answer, I would never have been cast. So you took the risk again. Took the risk. Now, the interesting thing is, Lillian, that after I was cast and found out how many superstars had read for the same part and weren't, were not cast, I started feeling very insecure. <laughs> I mean, and... And yet you have the role. Yeah, right? I have the role. I mean, that Stop shows you it. that shows you the power of the mind. Yes. Here I was already cast and was thinking, well, I can't do it if she read and didn't get it, and, and she read and didn't get it. Well, I can't do it. I'm not as great as them. And so you have to constantly rejuvenate your spirit and, and do positive reading and, and believe in something to get, get that belief and the, the power into yourself. Uh, I understand that uh, Clint Eastwood was very instrumental in your life. He started my film career because he came to see me in a play called Does a Tiger Wear a Necktie? I got the L.A. Drama Critics Circle Award for that, but as a result of him seeing me in the play, uh, he cast me in a cameo role, Magnum Force. And that was an all-white film. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I had done all black f exploitation films and not the quote right people s ever saw me so once magnum force came out other directors saw me and i was cast in lots of television projects what which uh, tv show did you work on but once again prepared you see <laughs> <laughs> prepared it happened because i was good what other? Would you would you recommend to the young people to do stage work here because some casting directors, some directors do go to see the shows? I recommend to act anywhere you can uh, with good training. Uh, um, here you're saying is Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I know that it's sometimes hard from what I hear. Uh, it's hard to get casting people in. But you cannot assume no one will see you. I mean, you, to be in this profession, you have to do it for the love of it, not 
because you think you may get famous or rich or whatever, the love has for the profession has to be there first. Uh, there is no set rule, Lillian. If you want to act, you've got to work at it. Uh, you've got to act. You can't sit around and talk about it. And don't think about the obstacles. I certainly have obstacles. Meryl Streep has ob obstacles. They always arise. You cannot let I can't into your mind, mm -hmm. which is what happens to me even now. I have to work at that. Mm -hmm. Margaret, we have about a minute, and I would like you to wrap up speaking to either the young people or the parents or the educators. Um, I think it's terrific what you're saying, the, what the purpose of the, the show, Lillian. Uh, I would say do not come to Hollywood with no money. Getting s discovered at the soda shop is ridiculous. I mean, nobody does it. Uh, be prepared. Be prepared to not even get an agent f for a year. And in Los Angeles, you can't even work without an agent. And stay away from... Stay away from <laughs> the, the negative elements. And know also that anybody that has a shingle teaching the, the, the fine arts is not qualified. You must okay. check them out. I have to wrap up. Thank you for being with us. And remember, keep watching us because we keep watching out for you. I want to thank Margaret. And um, I want to continue talking to you.